Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to do something a little bit different and very requested. Well, by very requested, I mean probably two people in total, but let's not dwell on the details. Today we're going to talk about how to light up your low policy. And I'm going to start with introducing this very basic three-point lighting system that most people know about but i'm just gonna briefly talk about it here so let's delete the um the default light and add a new light into this and we're using a default cube how amazing is that isn't it uh okay so this is going to be our accent light so imagine that this cube is the objects that you want to render and this surface here is the surface that you want to highlight the most and you put the action light obviously coming from this angle so we're gonna give that quite a big value for that and then secondly we're going to add a fill light so because realistically, light doesn't only come from one side. You have lots of different light sources bouncing around in one environment. So we're going to add a secondary light, but make it much dimmer. Okay, so now let's try to render this quickly and see what it looks like. Yes, so I think I could even go dimmer with this maybe a hundred or something yep so and last but not least let's do a backlight oops that's not what i want to do oops. let's move that around rotate a bit Grab that and boom, we are done. So this, you can turn it up a little bit, but probably not too much. Now we've learned how to make the basic three-point lighting system, I'm going to now go through a few of my previous projects and works to discuss how to apply that three-point lighting system into your low policy. Now that if you want to figure out how to make a specific object or how to make a certain material, please go to my channel and check out each of these, each of these individual time lapse to figure those out. I'm going to leave the links down below as well. And for this video, if if you like, if you enjoy my content, please smash that like button and let me know what you think. Okay, now let's take a look at the bakery scene that I made, I think, last week. And uh, firstly, we go to the world setting and look at how the world is being lit up in this particular one. I think I didn't touch much, I think I just changed uh, from kind of a darker grey uh, to a lighter color because I want it to be a day scene so it doesn't it shouldn't be too dark But this is just kind of a standard setting for the low poly scene. You can also use it using um, HDRI for this, but it will give it kind of a more realistic lighting But it's not really needed in sort of this sort of uh, low poly style in terms of the individual lighting so it's a very simple system. You have an area light that's um, lighting up the scene from top. And uh, yes, it's set to 200. So it's not a lot, basically. You can see that. And I gave it a, this sort of a little bit of yellowy, reddish, orange. Uh, yeah, I guess that would be kind of orangey tone, but it's not too obvious. So um, it kind of imitates what uh, sort of light you will have in the bakery. And obviously, um, we're going with the three point lighting system again. So you will have a light coming from the side as well that is even dimmer and with the same color. Because in the bakery scene like this, you wouldn't have um, crazy lightings. I mean, that, they will probably look pretty good as well, but um, they will probably be sort of a neutral color because you're in a bakery, not in a nightclub, right? So yeah, that's what I went with in this scene. And last but not least, since we have a window, so it's very important to utilize all of 
the possible light source that you can have in the scene. And when you have a window, it's almost obligatory for you to do a natural lighting that's uh, that's imitating a sunshine, a ray of sunshine coming through from the window. So that's what I have here. And you can see that. So in this particular scene, even the, the side lighting is not as um, not as bright as the sunlight because the sunlight is quite bright. I didn't go with sun because sun is actually quite strong in my opinion. So I'm using again an area light but with kind of this golden yellowish sunlight color and I think it looks pretty good in the final scene. And for the cyberpunk sushi restaurant, this is a crazy one to look at because obviously there is a lot of lighting involved. And sorry for this random uh, grain of rice just floating outside of the scene. I am a little bit messy with uh, things like this. So uh, if you want to obviously clear that up, you know, move it out of the way. But for now, let's just, this will do for now. And uh, let's turn on this and we can take a look at what's going on. So, you know what, I'm just gonna put it into render. So the see, so the lighting for this is, is a little bit complicated, obviously, because it's supposed to be a night setting. So if you go into the world again, this is very dark because I wanted it that way. I wanted it dim and dark so I can highlight the actual lights that's present in the scene. So um, there is two kind of different lights, obviously. So there are some objects here that I've given them an emission value. So with the emission value, they're just going to light up um, automatically. So for example, for this counter here, I have this little strip of light going on. And uh, if you go into the material, you can see that other than the silver material for the rest of the counter, the light strip actually I gave it, I used basically if you change um, from the normal principle BSDF to emission setting, which is this one. And it's very easy, you just give it a color and you give it a strength. So in terms of the stre strengths, think about the fact that uh, is this a material that you want to use throughout the entire scene? And uh, how bright do you want it to be? If, if, if all of the lights are going to be in this color, is it going to be overpowering? So that's the kind of things that you want to think about. But I change it to two in this case because I want it to be the highlight of the scene. And I don't want it just to be kind of a back light sort of going on. So that's why this is popping and uh, I think it looks quite nice. It's the same with these blue. Uh, but the, the thing about blue is that I chose a blue color that's quite dark. So I want it to brighten up a little bit more. That's why I give it a little bit more strength on this one. So um, I think for this particular one, if even if you go down a little bit, it wouldn't make too much of a difference. And you can see that the same blue light is used in this strip as well, in the TV for a little bit, and all of that. And last but not least, you have these writings on the left and on the right. So what I did with these words is because I used uh, I used to. PNG graph without background. So it's just it's just the wordings basically. And what I did with it is that I used the image as the as the base color. So it's going to show up as these words. But I give it a little bit of emission in this. So I changed the color of the ev emission tab here and that's why this is pink and this is yellow. And by the way, so if you look at the scene here, you can see that most of the uh, kind of the LED lighting that I used is pink and blue. But if it's only pink and blue, it's going to be a little bit boring. So I added a little pop of yellow here. It's kind of an accent color. And I think it looks pretty nice in this one. So now we are sort of done with all of the um, emission of the objects within the scene. Let's take a look at what happens in the overall lighting setting. So um, a little one first, I have this little light um, showing over there because obviously I have this aquarium here 
and let's switch back to this and you'll be able to see that obviously i have mm, i mean it's obviously not showing in the scene but i have all of the water tag right behind this wall and sorry if it looks a bit messy but uh the light is shining upon to this water here actually if i want to i should even move it out a little bit more so it's a bit more obvious let's take a look yeah so the the aquarium here will be light up a bit more because of this one additional small lighting there uh, you can use different sort of lights for that one as well and even for the sand material I decided to give it a little bit of emission value because or else it's just going to be too dark I mean as well as the little fish as well uh, because I want this to pop in the scene so I give it a little bit of juice and uh, the for the rest of the lights so again 3.19 uh, two at the side one at the top so what I use for this is kind of a spotlighting because I want it to be more focused um, kind of around this um, sushi counter area so you can see that it's very bright and it has kind of a normal dining restaurant uh, light color so nothing again nothing uh, weird because we're going very weird with the scene uh, we already have pink and blue and everything so I want this to be kind of what uh, imitates the sort of light that you will get when you're actually sitting down for sushi and uh, but you can go a little bit crazy with the with the side lights of course so what you can see here uh, we have two area lights on the side again and uh, what these colors were very much determined because they are on the side so they were very much determining what's showing over here over this area so as you can see uh, this particular part of the corner is lit up in this pinkish hue and this particular part is in this purple color because of this area, uh, area light that's set up in the purple color and uh, I want this side to be kind of the accent of the scene so this is slightly uh, more power this light is more powerful than the other one as well um, to be to be honest, I can even dim this a bit more. Yeah, and it will still look very nice because um, I want kind of this left half to be um, the highlight of the scene. I want people to look at it more, so you can definitely use that um, to shift people's um, eyes towards a corner or a part of the scene that you want to highlight the most. And for this ramen shop scene that I did a while ago, if you guys watch my old videos, you know that this little block here is the volumetric fog. So I'm gonna move that, uh, oops, I'm gonna move that out of the way so we can take a look at what's going on here. And uh, I'm gonna move the camera a little bit as well. Yes, so uh, in this little one, ooh, I love the details actually, <laughs> and in this little one we have, so from the look of it you can already see, since we have two lanterns, obviously that's going to be a light source, and if you move the lantern down a little bit, you see that I have this little object in here, and if I do a render view you see that it's very bright because I give it a very high emission value I think and sort of an orangey bright color and with the lantern outside I give it a little bit of a transmission so the light can come out of there properly like a real life lantern and uh, if you go inside the shop so obviously imagine yourself sitting here eating a bowl of ramen you wouldn't just want to be having this very dim lantern light by your side. You wouldn't even be able to see what's in your ramen bowl, to be honest. So what would actually happen in the actual restaurant is that obviously there will be a headlight um, that's on top of you so you can see uh, what's going on in the food so you can eat properly under proper lighting. So I did that with two small point lights 
and then from um, the back of the oh i think i accidentally deleted uh, a, a cabinet here which is a whoopsie and uh, here because this is the kitchen supposedly so you will have obviously a kitchen light as well it doesn't show too much in the final scene but it's a uh, um, you gotta be realistic and uh, think about all of these little details and um, it's also having the lights there is able to allow you to showcase whatever details that you have in the back of the restaurant so it's quite cool as well and in terms of the general lighting i still have um sort of the normal um three point uh, but in this case i had a backlight which is blue and the cool thing about this is that for these two backlights, because I have these water puddles uh, on the floor, these blue lights are going to kind of be uh, kind of be reflected upon in the water. So the water will have a bit of a uh, oops. I think in this case you can't really see, but if I move a bit, you will see that it will be a little bit of blue because of the blue area light that we have. And if we just go back a little bit and for this bizarre thing it's basically imitating a moon uh, I know that you can use different kind of uh, other sort of lights to do that you can use an area light for that as well uh, but for me personally I think it's quite fun to just use an object that actually imitates the shape of moon it's just a sphere sphere and in this case i give it a kind of a yellowy color and quite a bit of a strength because or else the emission won't be strong enough to kind of shine upon uh, the rest of the scene so that's it for the ramen shop and last but not least we have the moroccan garden that i made very recently and let's take a look so I've already set up this scene for, yeah, for the night version, which I absolutely adore. It's just, um, I think it's beautiful in terms of like the lighting and the garden and the green. It's a, it's a style that I really like. And uh, what I did was the lighting, again, it's, uh, it's kind of a three-point three system, uh, very traditional. So I have something on top lighting the scene in general, and I have two area lights on the side with a bit of, of a blue hue because I find out that that was the color that suits the scene the most that I wanted to do and um, if you go into this little corridor you'll see that so again when you do a lighting you need to um, think about realistically what will happen in uh, in the real world um, if you have a garden like this do you want the garden to be extremely bright or is it is it kind of realistic at night it's kind of not because uh, obviously you will have a bit of garden light like these uh, here and there and you can see that by the fountain you have a bit of a small spotlight uh, sorry, sorry not small like uh, point light which is very um, very dim as well not very dim 200 watts is okay so just enough to light up the scene a little bit but not to steal the show so realistically speaking you will have these little garden lights popping here and there um, in your garden but obviously you will be living inside the building so what's more important is to light up these um, corridors where you will actually walk along so i have additional spotlights over here and also along that corridors as well and you can see these are 500 watts so they are more powerful than the ones in the so overall you can see that the garden is um, you can still see what's going on in the garden because it's very properly lit but it's obviously way brighter in the corridor because realistically speaking that's how um, garden design in inter interior design uh, would do in real life as well so that's how i decided to light up the scene 